is Free Range Kara back with some more uh, farm stories. And I've got two stories about this one finger. This, this is my cat bite finger. I don't know what it is about this particular finger, but if I'm gonna get bit anywhere, it's it's gonna be this finger, my little, my little lefty index. I've had two instances of having to go to the hospital from getting bit on this finger. The first one, um, we'll call it the, the hospital stay one, because I had to stay overnight in the hospital. We brought home this little probably six or eight week, eight week old kitten that we found when we were um, doing the annual fairground cleaning at the, the Slope County Fairgrounds. And we found this little like, little brown and black striped tabby and he was so cute. And everyone knew that we were kind of the, the household that took in the, the stray cats. So they say, you need to take this cat home. And we go, uh, we don't, kind of don't need another cat, so we, we took him home anyways. Uh, we named him Champion because we found him at the fairground. Um, our champ for short. We, um, we didn't know how much exposure he'd had to anything, so we were trying to be careful about introducing him to things. So I was, I was carrying him around the garage like this, and he saw our dog for the first time. And he didn't handle that well. At all. So I tried to hold on to him so he wouldn't like freak freak out and like run away and get lost. And that caused him to take his little tiny kitten teeth and just go DINK! Right at my joint of my finger. I've been bitten by cats probably hundreds of times living on the farm, like it's just a thing that happens. So I was like, oh I'll run some cold water over it and we'll just... We'll just forget about it. I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have left it alone. This happened on a Saturday, and I woke up Sunday, and my, my finger had swollen to twice its size. I couldn't bend my finger. And I had a little, uh, a track of red running down my hand, or I guess up my hand, into my arm. So I'm like, oh, this isn't good at all. And I go, mother, I think I need to go to the clinic. And she goes, well, the only thing that's open on Sunday in our area is the emergency clinic. But then I showed her my finger, and she's like, Okay, we're, we're going to the emergency clinic. So we go to the closest one, which is an hour away. I feel fine and everything, nothing, I don't feel woozy, I don't feel ill. So we finally get to the, the closest emergency clinic and they, they look at my finger and they're like, okay, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a, a catheter in you, a little IV catheter, and we're gonna send you to Bismarck, which is even further away, probably an additional two, two and a half hours from where we were. To have you go in for surgery because you need to get that cleaned out and we can't do that here because we're booked full or something I can't remember I was in the eighth grade so my mom drives me to Bismarck where we get checked into this children's hotel and they're like okay we're gonna have you go in for surgery tonight so we can get this all cleaned out then it dawned on me I was supposed to go to school tomorrow tomorrow's the first day of school so they take me in they put me under and they clean up my my cat bite wound and I have to stay the night in the hospital and I stay most of Monday too. And then my mom comes picks me up. Guys, I'm such an attention seeker. They said it was fine to keep the, the finger exposed to the air. And just in a week I had to go in and get my stitches taken out. But what did my, my attention seeking self do? I made myself, uh, I cut the, the finger off of a glove and I put this little glove finger over my finger and acted like it was like a cast. So the next day I went to school and I asked people if they would sign it because I'm an attention seeker. <laughs> and some poor fools helped out my ego and signed my little tiny finger cast. And uh, to this day I have this zigzag scar on my on my finger. And I'm, I still have full range of motion and everything. It's a perfectly functional finger. It's like... That's the first story about my cat bite finger. The second one involves... Uh, Thankfully not another hospital stay, but it involved me getting my very first rabies shot. So I was uh, walking around the, uh, the old farm, you know, as you do, looking for stuff to do. So I wander into what we call the, the car graveyard. My grandfather had collected all these cars that he wanted to work on in his lifetime. Uh, fortunately he passed on before he got to work on any of them, so they're just a bunch of old cars sitting in a lot north of our place. I'll walk through there and like look for eggs and stuff. Cool creatures. Try to catch a snake. Um, but what I found was one of our cats who, whose name is Streaker. Not because it like ran around with no clothes on, although I guess it did do that too. It had a gray streak uh, running down its head, so my mom named him Streaker. And he was like stumbling around and like couldn't quite get his feet under him and I was like, 
oh, he's had a stroke. Because we had a bunch of cats have stroke-like symptoms on our place. I think it's due to a disease. They usually recover the next day, so I was trying to get him back to the barn. So I pick up Streaker, and he's not having any of that. I get about halfway back to the barn before he bites me on my cat bite finger. And again, uh, kind of like a, I'm not too worried about it kind of thing. He didn't bite me on the joint like the other guy. He bit me uh, a little bit above, but my mother was worried being as um, Streaker is an adult cat and he is not vaccinated for rabies. My mom did some research and there's like two kinds of symptoms I get with rabies. One's the one you always see in movies where they're like aggressive and foaming at the mouth and freaking out. And the second one has stroke-like symptoms. So I go to the same hospital, it's an hour away. They say, oh, well, can you catch the cat and get it tested for rabies? And we're like, no, he's probably gone by now. It's tough enough to catch a stray cat and bring it in. And the rabies test would involve euthanizing the cat and sending its body in for testing. And we couldn't find the cat. So like, okay, we're just gonna give you post-exposure rabies vaccine. It's gonna be a, a series of like four vaccines you're gonna need to get in like a big dose today just to make sure you don't get rabies. And I said, okay, I'm ready for this. My mom always told me they got like shots in the stomach. For the biggest dose they do is they do it around the site of the bite, which was my finger. Do you know how many nerves are in your finger? <laughs> so many nerves. 12. Yeah, at least 12 probably. So they have me sit on this chair and they start. I don't know if I should put in like a medical disclaimer here, like I'm gonna say like medical things, but like they're gonna, okay, I'll give you three seconds to pause it and go away. They put the needle and did a ring in my finger of injection. And I, I don't usually get like woozy at medical stuff, but that put me over the edge and I almost passed out. And my mom goes, you're looking pretty white. And I go, yeah, I don't feel so good. And she goes, you should lay down. And I go, okay. <laughs> so after they did the, the initial shot, they also gave me one in my arm and I had to go back like weekly for the next month to get another shot in my arm just to make sure they boosted it enough to keep the rabies away if the cat had rabies. I never found out, I never saw the cat again. So, great mysteries of the universe. In hindsight, that's worked out really well for my career, being a veterinary technician. If I ever get bit by an unvaccinated cat, I just have to go do a blood test and they can tell me if my rabies titers are still good from when I got my rabies shot. That's all my cat bite finger stories for today. If you guys like that one, let me know if you want to hear about any other dumb things that I've done on the farm. Leave comments below, leave questions, and check me out on social media. I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye